Hi there. So I suspect you have been admiring my sign in the background. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. My upline and creative memories gave me that. Um, I love being an advisor and I love my support system. So um, if you are interested in becoming an advisor, please reach out to one of us. Today is Tip Tuesday and um, I'm going to show you again a few skills and then show you a paid spread that you can make with these skills. So um, if you recall last week I said that all the little um, the little uh, dots that fall out when you use your photography chain that I wanted you to save those and so we are going to use those today. So <clears throat> let's just jump right into it. I hope everybody had a great Christmas. Oh my goodness, let's see here. Got a new system going on here, so hopefully uh, we can can manage it. All right, so um, what I am going to do is I am going to cut, uh, what did I want to use for this? I had a pretty piece of paper, here it is. I am gonna cut a three inch square and a four inch square. I had my perforating blade in there, so I am going to put that back. All right, so a three inch square and a four inch square. <clears throat> I've got kind of a ragged edge here I'm gonna get rid of for a second. All right, so four inches. So I'm gonna line it up to the four here. I'm gonna line up my white, the white bar there with the four here. And then I'm gonna flip it and rotate it and line it up at the four again and line up this at the cut that I already did. That way I don't mess up any of my paper. And now I want a three inch square, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna line it up to the three inch there, line up my white bar to the three inch here Flip my paper, line this edge up once again to the three, and then my cut is here. You might not be able to see it, but that way I don't have any frayed little edges and stuff um, so that I can save my paper. All right, next what you want to do is you want to take one of your squares, and they're all the same a square as a square, all the sides are equal. So on one of them, I'm gonna pull the little corners together and just put a little crease right at the top. Um, I'm gonna cut this on the knot. See how I really creased it? Like I really like put a little, so that I can see it. Hopefully you can see it too. I can see it. Um, in case you can't see it, I'm gonna put a dot there, but typically you don't need to, you can see it. If you have some pretty good lighting, but put it big just to be obnoxious for you guys. All right, next what I wanna do is I wanna put that little dot on my cutting groove. Now on our trimmer, um, there's two grooves. Um, one of them might be smooth on yours. You know what, I'm gonna point this out. A lot of people don't realize this. This is um, a self-healing mat that we're cutting into, which is why our blades don't dull very quickly. It's because it's, it's going right into the self-healing mat. Um, but these grooves are not supposed to be really deep and ugly. Um, in fact, this is this groove too is pretty deep and ugly. So I'm actually going to flip it over. We've got a groove one. We have a groove two. And then when your grooves are start, in other words, when the grooves are no longer going in but they're sticking out, it means. I mean, I can feel it, it's really rough. It's time to, to flip it. When you have exhausted all four cutting grooves, then it's time to get a new one of these. And if you're almost um, if you're almost to the end of it and you're gonna place an order, I would go ahead and order an extra one even if you're not ready, because we have a storage place for them right under here. Um, so when you get on groove three, go ahead and buy another one. Go ahead and have it handy here so that you won't be at a weekend retreat without your um, mat strip, okay? So, I'm glad I mentioned that. All right, so let's go back to it. All right, so I will be cutting in groove three here. Um, so I'm gonna put that little um, squishy, that little part that I put the dot on, 
on top of that groove. And then my bottom right corner, I'm going to put that also in the groove. If you're not good at this yet, um, we do have some little help sakes to make sure you have it where you intended. There's this little thing right here, this little slider, and it's got a little whisker on it. Um, and if that whisker should be going right through that black dot, and that little whisker should be going right back through the corner here, okay? So if you're new to it, um, go ahead and do that before you cut. All right, after I do that, save this and do it again. So I'm going to now rotate it. Th th that is still up there at the groove. And then my bottom left-hand corner is on the cutting groove. All right, so what you're going to get is um, two little triangles like that and one triangle like that, and we're going to keep them all. All right, and we're going to do it again with this one, this time a little faster, so that those of you that are advanced are not getting bored. All right, so we're going to go here and do a cut. Save that, and we're going to swap it again, go down to the bottom left. All right. So now I've got all that I need to show you um, show you this. So this is super cool. We're gonna make a cute little Christmas tree. So this is gonna be the, oh, I'll build it like this. This is gonna be the bottom of my tree. And then I'm gonna do the reverse side. So if you pick your paper so that you like the front and the back, then you can have two, you know, variegated color. I'm gonna take these um, these um, these triangles and squish them together there. And then I'm going to take my smaller triangle and put it on top. And next I'm going to take my other two. And you can line them up right on the, um, the vertex of your triangle there. And then you know it's right in the middle. Alright, is that super cool? So that is a beautiful little Christmas tree. And then when you're ready... Um, and I would um, adhere this um, with uh, repo so that if you put it together and it's too big or, you know, doesn't fill your spot, you can always, you know, change, change the spacing later to however you want it, okay? So use your repo so that you can change your mind, all right? Um, and then these little dots that I told you to save, these are the little dots that fall out every time you use the um, photography chain border maker cartridge. All right, so um, we're gonna, what I would do, what I did when I made the one that I'm getting ready to show you, is I just use my precision point adhesive. Yes, I could use my tape on here, but sometimes this is better for what I'm working on, and this is a great example of that. I'm just gonna go and put a few dots here and there, and then, grab my dots and put it on there. What I just did is I licked my finger. Is that super gross? It's my own spit and I don't mind it. Um, but if you don't like your spit, you should probably not lick it. Is that super cool? All right. Another thing um, that I want you to know about, we have some punches. There's three in a box. They're little small ones. And one of the three, it's called piece by piece. One of the three has this little star guy which is absolutely genius for Christmas trees. And what I would recommend is to throw one of your little foam pads. We have these little foam pads that are super inexpensive and you get a zillion of them. You can just put that on, it's double-sided, just pull the little piece of paper off and bam, you've got a beautiful star. For my trunk, what I did is I just grabbed a scrap piece of paper, to be honest. And um, I did some tearing on the one that you're going to see. Um, when you tear up, that leaves your little white torn edge there, which is what I really wanted. So I want to tear up here too. All right, and then I'm going to tear up this way. You have to tear up to get that, um, that nice... Um, that nice part. So this doesn't look all that pretty with this tree, actually. It really doesn't. Um, but on the one that I did, it, it does look really good. So um, I just wanted you to make sure that you knew how to do some torn uh, paper so that the the core of the paper shows through. This won't work with cardstock. It only works with, with paper that has a white core. 
All right, so that's the, the main thing that I wanted to teach you how to do. And then what I did is I actually, and this is not going to be really super pretty. Actually, let me make it kind of pretty. Let me see what I have here. So next, this would look pretty mounted on a piece of red paper. So what I did is I used this little guy. Um, for fun. I think this is a really, like, this is a pretty nice size embellishment, isn't it? So I'm probably not going to do one on each side. You know, I'll probably just do one on a double page spread. And so I want it to be really elaborate and really pretty so that it, we only need one thing on, on the page. And um, I want it sitting on red. So I actually used the green blade for this. Okay, and then I probably would go and also do a contrasting color, like maybe on white, but I'm not going to do that now. And when I do the contrasting color, since I just used green, um, I want it to be bigger if it's going to be something that it's sitting on. So I would come through and use the blue. The blue is going to make it even bigger than what the green did. But I just want to show you now that you, even if you haven't seen that tool, I think that was enough instruction to be able... To copy it so you see what I mean by use use repo um, I would cut this first and then build but that way if it's not perfect you can um, rearrange and I don't know where my cute little trunk went oh here it is we'll put that down there all right super cute all right um, I this next skill you did see last week but I just want to make sure you remember how to do it because um, I did, definitely did this on the page um, it's like a ribbon at the top of your page you're going to start by putting your paper at the edge and just cut away strips. So that's the thinnest possible piece of paper that you can cut off that you aren't going to be using. After you've done the first cut, I want you to take your whole piece of paper and move it up and remember where you've moved it up to. I think I want to make it, what I'm doing is I'm moving it, um, there's the prominent mark, which is the, the one and one half inch, and I'm doing one little smidgen more than that. All right, after you do that one, I am going to um, swap, swish it back down to the other side. You keep alternating sides, remembering where you lined it up to each time. And it was there. And it's not right. All right, I'm going to do it a couple more times. Oops, don't forget to keep changing direction. If you, if you don't change direction, you're not going to get that really neat little wave look. And then switch direction again. <laughs> All right, and then what you can do with those, which is super pretty, um, take the ones that look like they match together or, or so that you have the same look on both of them. Make sure you flip them in different directions. So this has to go this, whoops, that won't work. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yes, it would have worked. I just need to... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh my goodness. I feel like that's not right. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Do you see how they have to go towards each other? All right, and then you can kind of weave them to get this really pretty look. All right, so I did that on this page. Um, and the only other thing, um, again, is something that I already taught you is, um, to use your, um, your mirrored scallop border maker cartridge, um, to make things. So like, for instance, if I were to put this in here and you don't need much for this, this, these are going to be accents, so you don't need a whole lot. What I see when I look at this 
is I see like ribbons for a package. So I, I, I did some snipping so that they look like a bow across the package. So that's all I did on some of those. I also put foam squares behind them to give them a little pop, okay? And then on my little ornament, which I think you learned last week, I did just one of these for the top of the ornament, okay? So you're gonna see that when you see the page. So are you ready for the big reveal? This is so exciting. Let me put my top on. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is going to be this side, and this is the other side. So now let me point out, um, so I did make this tree with a 3 inch and a 4 inch square, just like I taught you. You can see the base of the trunk has that torn piece of paper. That is my bird in the background. He is totally fine. No one is tormenting him. Um, this is um, the little bow that I talked about. I just thought popping it there kind of looked like a bow on a package. This I actually am using a journal box. This I used my circle cutter to cut a 4.2 circle ready for any um, uh, circle that I want to put there. Again, with just one of these little things for the top, and I used my silver metallic pen to um, add the little crook here on the ornament top. And then, of course, the top, um, this is front and back of the same piece of paper where I have um, laid those in a fashion to make it look braided. Is that super pretty? Oh, over here, um, this is um, a blue piece of cardstock and a red, so I cut this with the um, green blade and I cut the red with the blue blade. All right. Oh, the letters. This is our white script letters. If you haven't seen those before, they're my fave. If you lay them down really close together like I have, it looks almost like cursive. Isn't that pretty? All right, so I think that's all I got. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah. Sorry. I think that's all I got. I appreciate you watching me today. And gosh, I think next time we see each other, it's going to be 2022. Um, if I have any advisor friends out there, um, go check out my website. I am doing um, a training, uh, a weekend retreat, in fact, for advisors only, uh, where you can come virtually scrapbook with us and um, see my demos. I do all kinds of, of classes during the week so that you can share with your customers. So um, check me out on scrapbookwithbecky.com and click on the events tab and you'll see the January advisor only events. Okay, thanks for watching, bye.